Welcome back to A Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and this afternoon I really am delighted not only to get John Paul Mason back on the show uh, but also to welcome Morton Vickhorst and Mark Reaper to A Celtic State of Mind. Welcome to the show guys, how are you doing? Thank you. Thank you and very, very well, thank you. You are both looking great, I've got to say. And JP and I were talking before, we said if you had said to us when we were 15, 16 years of age that we'd be sitting here with two guys who were heroes of that Vim Janssen season, we wouldn't have believed you. But here we are. JP, what was your memories of that campaign? Oh, well, it was my first year at university. So um, my life kind of changed in, in many ways in that I was spending time away from home, uh, staying through in Edinburgh and... Uh, going out a lot and uh, <laughs> enjoying beverages for the first time on a consistent basis. Uh, and I met a friend uh, who was very, very already ensconced in Celtic, uh, being uh, Celtic games, Celtic away games in particular. And he took, he started taking me to Celtic away games. But prior to that, it only been home uh, mm. Celtic Park. So my, my world was opened up and, I'm so glad it was that season that it happened because, you know, I started to see the team in, in, in places that I'd never seen before. And, uh, you know, places like <laughs> St. Johnston away and Dunfermline away were kind of exotic to me at that time. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were climbs that I hadn't really been to before. And uh, it was just great experiencing these stadiums for the first time and seeing such a, a brilliant team. Um, come together in that in that season, which was obviously so important for the club. Yeah, so important. What was it like, Morton, in terms of the social aspect that JP's talking about there? Um, for you guys, for Henrik, you know, we had some Scandinavian players at the club. Uh, was it a case of you, you lads would maybe suit yourselves or was it more of a bond with all the Scottish boys being involved in a social circle as well? I think it was, um, there was a great togetherness in the squad now. At the beginning of the season, there was quite a, f a number of new guys coming in, uh, had to settle in socially and on the pitch as well. Uh, but I think there was a, a great bond ac across the the nationalities. There were quite a few nationalities at the time. And Henrik was one of the, the Scandinavian boys. Harold was another one. Um, and Mark, of course. Um, I was sort of in between because I had been in Scotland for, well, since late 92. Mm -hmm. um, I started my Scottish career at Dundee. So, uh, I I knew the environment and um, I've been at Celtic for a, a couple of years, joined in 95. Uh, but I think that that, that squad in 97, 98, um, there, was a, there was quite a strong bond uh, right from the beginning uh, of that season and we needed that. Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd been playing at Dundee, we knew loads about you, Morton. Uh, Mark, you'd been down at West Ham and we often ask players, if they played in English football, what what is that like to then come up to Scotland? What was the big changes that you noticed yourself, Mark? Well, uh, obviously, obviously, there's no doubt about the league is is much more competitive in uh, in England. Uh, but then again, uh, for me, uh, coming from West Ham to Celtic, uh, it was a uh, West Ham. A big club as well, but but Celtic that was just massive. It's it's still difficult for for me uh, to explain to 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 my Danish friends and 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 uh, people that I know over here how how big a club uh, uh, Celtic uh, actually are. Uh, it's it's really really uh, massive, and and you don't uh, really get to know it before you're there, and 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 even when you get there, it's still uh, difficult to to comprehend that that. Uh, People are so passionate about uh, the club and and all the society and uh, the charities uh, surrounding the club and so so for me it was a it was just a great experience to to come up there and 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 meet a lot of uh, great guys and 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 speak to the fans and and the people in Scotland we we loved uh, being up there so so it was really nice for for me to and and my family as well to to get to 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 Glasgow and and and. Uh, Morton Mort said about the the team. I think it was it was a great mixture of of uh, of a base that was primarily Scottish and 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 then there's a, a primarily as well Scandinavians coming in and and we sort of connect really well because everybody in the Scandinavian they know uh, 
not just English language, but but they can speak German as well, and 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 some French and some uh, uh, Spanish. So so we we connect really well with uh, a lot of uh, of the guys who who were there already, and, and and it was really easy for me to to bond into uh, to this club, and and then I think the t- togetherness. Uh, with the players uh, that season, it was just phenomenal. Um, we bonded really well, and uh, we hung out after the after the training. We hung out after the games, and uh, went went for a beer now and then. And uh, it was really good. And the and the, the the girlfriends and and wives they they hung on hung hung out as well. Uh, so everything sort of gelled, and um, obviously the results they were pretty important, uh, and we knew all about. Uh, Nine and ten, and uh, and these numbers, uh, um, and and uh, that was obviously important for 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 us as well to 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 stop that uh, road that the uh, Rangers were in. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's one thing about Celtic, um, and I don't know what it's like with other clubs that you've you've played for, but we never forget. We never forget our our honours, our successes, our heroes. And 25 years on from that season, there is going to be a celebration. There's a tribute night in Glasgow on the 12th of May where you guys are going to get together with some of your your teammates from the 97-98 campaign to pay tribute to the success of that team, but also to the dearly departed Vim Janssen. That's going to be happening in May the 12th at the Armadillo, and the tickets for that event are underneath this video. We've been talking to some of your teammates uh, about that campaign. Morton, I'm going to come to you first. You were already at Celtic when Vim Janssen joined the club. What was your first impressions of him? Uh, Very knowledgeable of the game, very laid back, and I think that was a pretty uh, important uh, factor in in the in the the way things were going to pan out for the season that Wim of course with the support of Murdo as as his assistant um Wim was an outsider he didn't have any um you know history um of Scottish football he had Murdo to support him with Murdo's knowledge of the Scottish game but there, there was going to be so much pressure uh, on uh, from the beginning of the season uh, in 97 98 that I think it was um it was it was a strength uh, that Wim hadn't had any previous ex- experience of the, the Scottish game. Mm-hmm. He was he was laid back. He was still uh, you know, strong in his views on the game. Uh, we, we felt that right from the beginning. Obviously, being Dutch, most Dutch people have a an opinion of, of the game, and and it was the same with Wim. Um, he remained calm. We we had a, a couple of dodgy results. Um, at the beginning of the season, lost the first two uh, games of the league campaign, uh, but he remained calm and he slowly gelled the team together. He had an eye for uh, putting players together uh, in relations. So it was um, that was my my first impressions were, were very good, but I also knew that Precious was gonna was gonna build, as Mark mentioned. Uh, I think we, the players, the coaches, the, the manager got reminded regularly that how important that season, um, how that season was going to be. Um, mm-hmm. We had to had to stop the 10. Oh, for sure. As a fan, JP and I, I were, would have been brought up with the stories of the original nine in a row team that played for Celtic. And of course, we then found ourselves as supporters in the middle of a, a run by Rangers that were, you know, went on to equal that nine in a row. JP, I'm going to ask you about your emotions in that season. Everything was a bit nervy. There was a, a real anxiety and apprehension from the terraces, wasn't there? Big time. If ever there was a season where you were waiting or listening to the other uh, team's game on the radio, at games in particular, it was just, you were always looking to somebody nearby to be like, what's the score from wherever ground they were playing because it was that tight. Um, But just going back to to Martin, you obviously were there before um, Vim Janssen came in and you kind of experienced, I suppose, as a player, the kind of heartbreak that we felt as a fan in those two years before winning the league because, I mean, that was the League league Cup victory would have been your first trophy at Celtic, right? Um, Yeah, that's right. Because like just been two seasons of of kind of despair, you know, watching Rangers win nine in a row, and um, I'm sure they probably won a treble in there somewhere along the lines as well. So like for someone like yourself to have experienced that, but then but then to be there in the season where we triumphed, there was players 
like Peter Grant and Paul McStay who had been through that and didn't get to experience that. So I think for guys like yourself, it was extra special um, that, that, that season. Definitely. I, I felt it firsthand and I felt so sorry for the, the likes of uh, Paul McStay, Peter Grant, who were so Celtic through and through. Tommy Burns, who signed me, yeah. um, he was so passionate about the club. We played some fantastic football uh, from, well, the season 90, 95, 96, especially. Uh, as I remember, we, we only got beat once or something like that, but we still ended up second in the league. Uh, it was it was it was so hard, and you know, the the, the players you mentioned there, and and I include Tommy Burns. Um, Absolutely, we just felt so sorry for for the guys um, that we couldn't we didn't manage to to win the league. So when we finally won it and stopped the ten in a row, the relief was was massive, and and I remember thinking at the time, yes, we've won it, uh, and maybe. Paul McStay wasn't there, Peter Grant was there at the beginning of the season, um, Tommy Burns wasn't there um, as a manager, um, but they were still part of it. Uh, they had been part of the, the build-up to, to that league campaign, 97, 98. Um, they were just unlucky that we didn't win it before um, 98. Yeah. Mark, you, your situation, your experience would have been a slightly different one from Morton's, who knew about the eight and the nine, and, and you've came into the cauldron um, how did you first hear that Vim Janssen and Celtic were interested in signing you? What was the first contact? Well, I think uh, I think we were a few games into the season in the Premier League already, and uh, and and the the sort of interest started uh, coming up. I think we've played yeah three or four games uh, f- with West Ham, and. Uh, uh, then suddenly it, it just went really, really quickly. Uh, I think uh, over a few days uh, um, the deal got sorted, and and I think I, I arrived uh, sort of Friday the the twelfth September, something like that, and um, and and I had to play already uh, the following day uh, away to Motherwell, and 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 no knowing that I think we'd lost the first two games of the season and. And I think the book is they'd already paid out uh, for Rangers being uh, being the champions that year. So it, it was really, uh, I think I think it was it was a uh, it was a tough call. Uh, it was not tough for me to to, to sign up with Celtic because uh, I loved every minute of that. But but I think for the players who who been part of 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 not winning for nine nine years uh, in a row and and then. Um, Having lost the first two games of the season and 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 the book is paid out for 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 Rangers being champion uh, already. Uh, it was it was it was hard and 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 I, I I could feel that that the the tension was was there both uh, with the players and 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 obviously the staff as well. Uh, uh, Vim was was quite calm. Uh, Murdo he knew all about uh, uh, the situation and, and but. But we went on a on a really good run uh, afterwards, and and uh, and and obviously the cup the cup final uh, win, the league cup sort of gave us a bit of momentum, um, and and I don't think it was the greatest season in in terms of of results uh, that Celtic have ever played, but uh, obviously at the end. Uh, it counted more that 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 we had two points more than than Rangers uh, when we finished, and 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 that was. I, I can just say for for myself, I've never felt so fatigued in in, in my life uh, after after the last game. Um, we were, I think, we were all nagged uh, and really really happy. But the the tension and the pressure for us as as foreigners were were, were big, but but for the. For the homegrown uh, uh, Celtic players, I think it was it was just unreal. Um, I remember a few of the players uh, uh, puking before uh, some of the games uh, just because they were they were nervous and and it, it, you could feel that it was it was really really special for for a lot of the homegrown uh, talents. We we played Morton and I. We've played the. Uh, um, Big games for Denmark, uh, European uh, finals and 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 World Cup. Uh, it it we played just as big games as you get up up in in Glasgow, but but for the homegrown uh, 
players, it was it was unbelievable. I think the the pressure they won. Yeah, it's interesting to hear all that from a fan's perspective because you have this impression as a fan, JP, that footballers are just finely tuned athletes. They're like you know machines, and they go in and they play these games. But to hear about the nerves and and people puking up before the game, I find that really uh, interesting and insightful. Um, Morton, you mentioned Murdo McLeod earlier, and I think it's important to mention someone like Murdo because you know he was a real link to the club. He must have been a brilliant support to someone like Vim Janssen coming in. Uh, Vim obviously had made his name with Feyenoord and, and the Dutch national team, but he'd been managing over in, in Japan as well with no real link to Celtic, uh, other than the fact that his Feyenoord team beat us in the European Cup final in 1970. But how, how important was Murdo as a support mechanism for Vim? I think very important. Just to um, as support for, for Vim, as you say, um, he had a, a knowledge of the Scottish game, uh, knowledge uh, from his own playing career, um, his international career. And uh, I would have thought that he um, was able to guide Wim uh, through some situations that um, Wim didn't know about. Um, obviously, Wim had his own experiences and, and, and knowledge, but I think going into a, a league, an unknown league, uh, there will be, as a coach, as a manager, there will be some things that you need um, uh, you, need, you need some extra support. And I think Murdo gave Wim that. Uh, Murdo was great on the training ground as well, uh, taking uh, some of the sessions. And just basically, they were a good mix, a good good pair. Um, so he had a, he's got a, a great share of that um, that season, 97, 98. And we, now I, I know your question was about Murdo, but we, We've not really talked about the fans. The fans were were amazing um, that season. We have to we have to realize um, Martin and myself being foreigners. We 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 quickly found out you know the history of of of, of the club and and how much the support means. Uh, uh, and I can only I can only try to rem uh, to to to. Um, to think how how much tension that the fans would have felt that season um, with the, the the nine in a row record on on at stake. So, but the 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 support of the fans were amazing, um, absolutely fantastic. And it, it's it's going to be great on on May twelfth to to try and you know, get as many as long as possible and, and and celebrate this together. I can't believe it's been twenty five years. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> That is incredible. Mark, we were talking just before we went on live that you were talking about um, you know, the fact that you had played uh, with some great players, particularly in, in the Danish national team. And there's this massive conversation up in Scotland about uh, the greatest import in Scottish football. You, you guys played with um, Henrik Larsson in the hoops of Celtic, of course, but um, sometimes part of that argument is uh, one of the Loudrup brothers. I know that uh, obviously Michael and Brian were fantastic players. Mm -hmm. um, but where do you rate Henrik, Mark? Where do you rate him uh, alongside the players you've played with? Uh, well, he's he's uh, right at the top. I think. Um, sorry about that. Um, Hi, Henrik, eh? <laughs> Brian Loudrop's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Henrik for the mix. Yes, no, no. Uh, he's right. He's right at the top. Uh, that that was Brian. Yeah. <laughs> he, was he, 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 he didn't agree. No. Uh, now, now he, he obviously obviously Henrik is a team player. I think. More, more than um, both Michael and, and and Brian, they had unbelievable skills. Uh, pro probably more more skillful than than Henrik as well. But Henrik uh, uh, gelled in uh, to all the teams he's played for. He's working unbelievable hard, and um, and then he's he, he just got everything to gel at uh, at Celtic. Uh, we came uh, in the same season, and uh, and we spent a lot of time together, both with the. Uh, Families and 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 uh, and Henrik and, and and myself and Morton obviously as well, and he was just such a nice guy and uh, and uh, and and but and he scored the goals and the work rate he put into the to every game that was that was just unbelievable and I don't think people really understand that uh, obviously he scores the goal and he 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 uh, he got a lot of uh, attention in, in in that sense but but uh, he was he was just much more than that uh, uh both in the dressing room and and 
and um, his work road work rate uh, training and 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 in the games it was phenomenal. So so he's he's right at the top, uh, uh, and 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 well he could he could uh, change games uh, almost by himself uh, and 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 yeah great player. Well Super. you know that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, Morton, you had you had played alongside some brilliant imports from the likes of Pierre Van Hoydonk to Paolo Di Canio and, and George Cadet. What was different about Henrik Larsson, do you think, Morton? I think Max said it uh, so well um, already that he's Henrik was more of a team player. Pierre, um, George, Paolo were great individuals, um, but I don't think they had the same commitment um, not quite the same commitment as Henrik um, in terms of, of working hard for the team when the team wasn't in possession of the ball. Um, and I don't think any, with all respect, because they were they were great players in their own right, but uh, Henrik was just amazing in terms of scoring goals. He, he, he could score in so many different ways. He, you know, you couldn't hold him down. He was he would, in... He scored with his head, um, both feet, thighs, shoulders, mm -hmm. uh, chest, whatever. Uh, he was so, so much in command when he got close to the goal. And he knew that he could turn the game, as Mark said. He could turn the game in a split second, um, scoring a goal out of nothing. And he, had, he actually had a, a great eye for attacking spaces as well. Um, and I think that was one of his, his great strengths. You know, he... he it, it looks seasoned when, when, thing, when, when players like Henrik scores their, their goals, but they have a knack of, of attacking the, the free spaces at the right time. Um, so it made it easier for me as a midfielder, for instance, to, to, to attack the, the spaces with the ball. And then you knew Henrik was going to turn up and he had the, the technical skills to, to finish it off. Uh, but first and foremost, I think Mark um, nailed it. He's, he... He, he was such a big team player, um, even though he was such a big star. Mm -hmm. No, that's great to hear. And obviously, he's a hero of ours. And that jersey over JP's shoulder reminds me of various players. Morton Vikos, you're one of them. Um, but Henrik Larson as well, wearing that jersey with the dreadlocks. It was a great sight. Now... <laughs> yeah. Where's Morton V cost? I'll see if I can fit I'll see if I can fit him into mine as well. <laughs> no, yeah, obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm very I'm very flattered about that. He's yeah. played he's played uh, with some big big games, uh, like, uh, big guns. Uh, um but but yeah, well well we just uh, got on really well and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Peace with that, obviously. <laughs> Scored with his first touch of the ball. Like, the guy is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Genius. A genius. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we talk quite a lot about the signings uh, that came in, but he, here's something for you. When Matt Reaper joined the team, uh, Morton, we went on a, an 11 game unbeaten run. Now, that, that did include the European games against Liverpool that Mark was ineligible for. Um, but during those games, Morton, I think as a fan, we've seen, you know, the team coming up against quality opposition. We didn't get beat. We got knocked out away goals. It was none each and two two. Was there a belief within the squad, Morton, um, after those two performances that you did have what it takes to go on and, and win that league? Definitely. I 
think so. We had we had great players. The team was beginning to gel, went on an unbeaten run, um, and we competed well against Liverpool. Um, I thought we should have won over the two. Got it. Um, I think we we um, we had a penalty appeal turned down uh, at Anfield. Um, so we were a little bit unlucky, but th there was a, a genuine belief that we could go on and and um, do the most important thing of that season, and that was winning the league, obviously. Um, and, um, so, yeah, uh, the answer is yes, definitely. You know, Mark, you, you come in and very quickly you play two games against Rangers, home and away. Um, and obviously this is a, a massive derby that is renowned all over the, the football world, Mark. How, how did you find it in terms of a spectacle when you, you came, came up from England? Uh, was it everything you expected? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, as I said before, I think it was it was in one of them games where I saw uh, quite a few of our, our players uh, uh, get physically sick before the game. Uh, and, and that sort of made a big impression uh, uh, that 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 you could, well, everybody could get excited about a football game and get nervous and 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 but but this was so much more than than football. Uh, it was uh, it was the the biggest passion, uh, uh, both the players but the 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 fans as well. And and for me as a as a Dane and Morten as well and Henrik, well. We, we sort of we'd lost games before that with the national team and but the the the, the homegrown uh, Celtic players they could just not afford to lose them games uh, and they knew what was at stake uh, more than we probably did um, with with the ten in a row uh, so so it was just so so important for them that that uh, that we did well against the Rangers obviously because that was a a big part of uh, of winning the 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 league, but uh, massive massive games for the fans as well. It 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 uh, it just sort of um, made made the next three four weeks uh, uh, of 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 the living in Glasgow because you had to hear uh, from from the 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 opposite side of the of the town uh, how how bad you were playing and all that so so it was really really uh, important games uh, and and yeah um, I think I I still think it's the it's one of the biggest games in in in, uh, in world world football um, we are um, we're talking uh, up up uh, with the Madrid uh, Barca games and 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 then again I think because of the religion and and all the 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 troubles uh, that that you'd experienced, um, I think I think it's it's really really big uh, the game and 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 yeah it's 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 hard for me to 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 mention a, a bigger game in in world uh, football. Well, this week obviously we've got the big game on Sunday and it's um, at the forefront of our thoughts twenty four hours uh, a day leading up to that game. But we do have a question. I'm going to throw this one to you, Morton. You'll be able to. To maybe answer this one, William O'Toole is asking how you prepared for big games when you wore the hoops. What I would like to know is, was there a difference in preparation for the big games between Tommy Burns and Vim Janssen? Um Overall, no. It, it, as a player, you, you knew the importance of, of the games against uh, especially the Rangers and the old firm. Um I think for both managers, it was a question of trying to calm things. Uh, I think it was a bit easier for Wim because he didn't have any luggage. He he came in um, um, as a Dutchman, um, probably having been told the importance of the game, but for someone like Tommy Burns, born and bred in Glasgow, uh, Celtic through and through, um, it was so emotional, so passionate, um that it was probably a bit more difficult for for someone like Tommy to to uh, you know try and keep things calm. He did try. Um but I think to to get a, an easy build up um it's to try and find a balance between knowing the importance of the game, knowing that you have to, to perform on the day to get the, the win, uh, but also to keep things nice and calm 
and relaxed leading up to the game. I remember when I first joined Celtic, we went to Seamill, and that was a bit of a, a change of scenery because we didn't at that time we didn't go away before uh, before any league games apart from the the old firm games. Uh, we went down to to Seamill at the coast, um, and that was a bit special. So you knew something special was coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big game on Sunday, of course, and that that League Cup final of nineteen ninety seven. Uh, we we beat Dundee United three 0 and the goal that opened the scoring, of course, was Mark Reaper. Um, talk us through that, Mark. I mean, obviously, we went on to win three nothing, and it done wonders for our entire campaign. But talk us through that moment where you opened the scoring against Dundee United. Well, it's 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 the. It was always nice to score a goal. I didn't, I didn't do a lot of them, uh, make a lot of them through my career. Uh, I made some important ones, but um, this was obviously special for for the whole uh, team and for Celtic uh, as a club because it sort of it took a little bit of weight off our shoulders be mm -hmm. because we had the the one, probably the lesser one, but but we had a trophy already then. Um, and it boosted sort of our confidence for 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 the remainder of the season, and obviously um, pleased for for myself to to score the goal, uh, the one nil goal goal. But but I've never been the player that that sort of I took more pride in uh, in in the opponents not uh, scoring goals. So so for me it was just a bonus, and I was just as happy when when Henrik or Morton or someone else scored the goal. Uh, but obviously a cup final scoring winning um good experience yeah yeah great and also the goal though sorry it was great a great cross yeah, yeah. Uh, i think i think it's a, a miss miss hit from uh, from <laughs> uh, a, a winger or something like that <laughs> but oh, yeah. i remember, well, that was I, remember your... Morton. I remember Morton. it was it was it was a good cross <laughs> nice assist nice assist and that was your second league cup final wasn't it morton i mean um how big a, a part did that play and the, what was to come and i mean I'm, I'm looking at it from angie's perspective last season and also this season what does that do for the momentum i think for that particular season uh, as mark mentions that gave us even more belief that we could go and win the, the big one at the end of the season um it was a, a kind of mid-season event, uh, the first trophy of the season to be won. So it was a, definitely a boost uh, for team morale and um, the belief that we could, here's, here's a team that can win trophies. Um, so it's, um, it's, a, it's a nice thing that League, league Cup uh, mid-season, there's something there to, to compete for a trophy to be won. Um, early days um, and it gives a boost definitely. Uh, as you say, I, I've been in a in a League Cup final uh, before, and um, it's definitely uh, uh, it's definitely nice to be on the winning side. Not so nice to to lose cup finals. So great boost uh, in the ninety seven ninety eight season. For sure. I mean, I'm looking at Sunday. JP, what's your thoughts on Sunday before I ask Morton and Mark uh, for a bold prediction? What's your thoughts? Oh, I'm not, no, no predictions coming from me, but I, I just wanted to. Uh, talk about that League Cup final briefly and I think the significance is maybe lost in the fact that it was at Ibrox, the fact we won it at Ibrox, mm. the fact that my first League Cup final was the 94 Wraith Rovers League Cup final and I went there with my dad and obviously left in complete, complete and utter despair <laughs> at what happened but that's football isn't it but uh, so to win the League Cup that season was, it did feel like it was like, wait a minute, we we kind of, it was like somebody taking the sort of uh, breaks off us. We hadn't won anything really since 95, the Ergy Cup final. And even that was a total anomaly because prior to that, we hadn't won anything for, well, 89? 89, 89. six years, yeah. Yeah, so like we we hardly won any trophies. So to win it and win it so emphatically, Heather in off the post to get us off the mark from Mark Reaper unbelievable feeling I, I didn't have a ticket for that game I was in the hoops bar in the Gallagate remember it very very well my mate tried his best to get me a ticket but they were absolute gold dust as they are for Sunday by the way they're, they're total gold dust for Sunday I, I got on the second ballot very luckily through Celtic so I myself fortunate for that but I, by the time my friend came and met me in the pub after the game I'd been drinking since about one o'clock <laughs> so <laughs> I, mean, I, I was I was 
full of festive spirit by that point. And uh, I can remember us getting the train back to Edinburgh and we got, this is before they stopped you drinking on the train. So we got like a bag of cans for the train. I just remember singing Celtic songs all the way back in the train to Edinburgh, thanks to your good selves. So thank you. Ah, for sure. <laughs> uh, thank you. Morton, will you get a chance to watch the game on Sunday, Morton? Uh, yes, I'll definitely definitely make an effort. Um, uh, I'm watching a lot of food, football games these days. I have to uh, through my job, but um, I'll make make sure I, I watch the one on Sunday. I should buy the channel that broadcast over here. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be uh, it's a spe- it's always a special game. Cup finals are special, and a Celtic Rangers Cup final is is, is big. Um, so it'll be interesting. I am. Um, I don't get to watch all the, the Celtic games these days, but uh, as many as I can, and um, I'll be looking forward to the one on, on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, JP, myself, and many other Celtic fans have been uh, so impressed with Matt O'Reilly, you know, since he came to Celtic just over a year ago. And obviously, he's got the underaged um, international caps. Um, and, you know, we'll keep an eye on the Danish squad as a result of that, Morton. I mean, how well is he doing? I know that uh, you're involved with the national team um, and you'll be keeping an eye on him. How impressed have you been since he came to Celtic? Matt's done very well. And I actually came across to see him with the uh, then uh, under-21 manager of Denmark, Jesper Sorensen. Um, came to see him in, well, at the end of last year. Spoke to him. Um, and he's, he's a, a very uh, ambitious uh, young player who's done amazingly well since joining Celtic. Um, recently, he's been a bit in and out of the team, but that's I, I expect him to be back in. He's 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 a, a, a very good player, and he's he's one he's one that we are keeping tabs on. He's definitely on on the radar. Um, so uh, we'll wait and see what the the future holds. Um, skillful player, you can see uh, he sees a pass. Um, he can play in tight spaces, and he. He he likes to get into the box and score goals as well, uh, which is important for for a midfielder of uh, of his kind. So um, yeah, we'll wait and see. There's there's big competition for for places to get into the the Denmark setup, but um, he's uh, he's one that we are following. Yeah, no, it's great to hear. Um, Mark, will you get a chance to watch the game on Sunday? Yeah, we'll 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 uh, we'll watch it. Uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, if I'll be down uh, from the from the slope, uh, oh. but I'll I'll I'll, def- I'll definitely get the highlights. Uh, I'm, I'm going ski- I'm going skiing in Austria now, so uh, so we'll from tomorrow and uh, the next couple of days will be will be in the uh, Austria skiing. So, but I'll 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 watch and follow it uh, as I as I always do. Uh, it's it's not it's not the easiest to to get all the the the, the games from the from the Scottish. Uh, uh, league in Denmark, but uh, but when when uh, Celtic uh, and and especially Celtic Rangers are playing, it, it's normally always uh, on. So so we'll get a chance to watch it as well. Always Brilliant. great, superb. Paul Byrne actually comes in to ask about um, you know Angie's style of play and how it's viewed in other European countries. Mark, I'll ask yourself that question. How impressed have you been since Ange Postecoglou came over? He's been a revelation at Celtic. Yeah, I think I think uh, he's playing the way uh, that that the Celtic fans wants to 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 watch football. Uh, it's uh, it's attack attacking and uh, possession and uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's great great and I think he's he's been uh, impressive and uh, he's he's got some uh, some big shoes to to follow as well. So uh, it's it's been really good. You know, the thing we were talking about earlier, Morton, is the fact that you had the experience as a Celtic player under Tommy um, and we had come up against a very strong Rangers side. But there was a moment, and I don't know if you agree with this, JP, where the real belief um, came to me on the 2nd of January 98 where we beat Rangers and uh, the goals were scored by Craig Burley and Paul Lambert. Uh, two new signings, a Champions League winner and, and an international player in, in Burley. Um, how big was that game, Morton? Um, and coming away from that with a 2 nothing win, with new guys contributing, um, it seemed as a fan that was massive in terms of the momentum swing. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, it, 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 it meant so much to, to the team and the fans uh, coming away with that 2 nil win. Um, on the day, uh, two great goals as I remember them, especially Lambos, uh, absolute cracker. Um, so it meant the world to us that we 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 um, 
we managed to get the win over the, over the, the biggest rivals. And we knew uh, psych psychologically that would, um, that would mean a lot for the, the rest of the season. Uh, we send a message um, and we have to remember Rangers had a, a strong side that season as well. So it was always going to be tight. So to win the to win against uh, to win the game uh, against them on that day uh, was significant. Uh, we all knew that, and then they knew it. Oh, for sure. There's there's a few games that we've got to speak about. We've got to speak about the Dunfermline game, the St. Johnson game. Uh, but just a reminder to everybody tuning in uh, that the heroes of the 98 title winning side will be paying tribute to Vim Janssen on the 12th of May. It's at the Armadillo. And if you wish to come along, the ticket link is underneath this video. We've got actually a competition running where you could win a pair of tickets for that particular event. All we need to do is subscribe to the channel and we'll be announcing them very, very soon. Um, East End Park, JP, uh, talking about anxiety, talking about uh, concern and worry and all these other uh, emotions. That was a, a massive day uh, as a Celtic fan, wasn't it? It certainly was. <clears throat> it was one of those games where, again, you couldn't get a ticket for love nor money there, where they were in short supply. People were offering arms and limbs for tickets for that game because everyone thought that, that was the day we were going to potentially do it. And I uh, I watched the game with my dad in, in the house and we were sitting there at 1-0 and I knew there would be a party of all parties in Glasgow if, if we were to do it. So I made the terrible error of putting my jacket on and my dad said, I'll drive you through to Glasgow if you know if it happens. So I'm sitting with my jacket on, 88th minute, Craig Falconbridge jumps up, glancing header, Simon Donnelly in tears probably thinking, this is me getting written into Celtic folklore and then an equaliser just ended it all. So <laughs> swiftly took my jacket off <laughs> and then just sort of went into a quiet, dark room for an hour or two because it was, uh, I, I was a little bit worried at that point, I have to say. Yeah, I've often wondered, Mark, the six days between the Dunfermline game, which ended 1-1, and the St. Johnson game, what does a manager do to try and just keep everybody calm for the big game at Celtic Park? I mean, what was that week like for you guys? Oh, uh, it was a long week, uh, for sure. I think Vim, Vim handled it uh, really, really well. He was he was always calm uh, right through the season. Um and uh, the, um, Murdo, he was more like a, a fiery type. Uh, he um, he was the guy who sort of, of of got the spirit up in the in the dressing room uh, amongst with uh, a lot of the other boys. But uh, but Vim was really really calm and and uh, never really. Uh, I think I think he was really tough to to uh, sort of get out of control. Um, uh, Vim was. Um, he he looked calm. Let me say it that way, because he he definitely felt the pressure as well. Uh, and and uh, and I think the week up to 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 the last game, you could you could really feel the the especially the the Celtic homegrown players. They were uh, they were they were sick from an anxiety uh, and and. Uh, and yeah, if 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 we'd lost it uh, in the in the last. Uh, Game of the season. Uh, I don't think anyone could have could have gone into to to, to Celtic uh, and, and Glasgow again. Uh, that would have been terrible for for everybody, especially the the homegrown boys. Uh, uh, us foreigners, we had we knew we had a we had a place we could we could uh, get away to. Uh, but uh, the 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 guys uh, who 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 lives in and uh, have their lives in, in in Glasgow, they would have they would have. Uh, had had troubles right uh, the rest of their life, so um, yeah, <laughs> it was it, it was it was uh, it was just massive, and and you could feel the tension from from everybody, uh, and yeah. and obviously it was it was really nice when the result finally uh, got in uh, on on the last day. Yeah, it's great looking back, Morton, but I just remember that week being very stressful. You mentioned earlier that Vim had a calmness about him. Um, how how critical was that? Because as Mark says, you've got guys like Jackie McNamara, Simon Donnelly, Tom Boyd, the homegrown guys that, you know, this means the world to. Um, was Wim very good that week and, and just keeping everybody on an even keel? He was amazing, uh, just like uh, Mark says. To be honest, me personally, I, I can't remember that week. 
the only thing I can remember is the longest week ever. And I remember thinking after the Dunfermline game, can we just please play tomorrow? We want to, to play that game straight away mm-hmm. against Johnston to get to get this sorted. Uh, but the, the, the days were just long. Uh, but I can't remember it. Basically, I, I, what I can remember is the, the, the game against St. Johnston when we wrapped it up and uh, getting in front pretty early in the game uh, through Henrik strike and uh, Harold uh, wrapping things up at the end. Uh, I also remember a few nervy moments where I think St. Johnston hit the bar mm-hmm. uh, at 1-0. Um, but uh, what a relief at the end. And just felt um, so happy for everyone just like i mentioned earlier that the old guys that, that or the even the, the players like Tom stay peter grand uh all the homegrown boys because the, the pressure was immense uh and for all the fans i remember the fans just jumping about some were crying a lot of people were crying and uh, the rest were just dancing and and jumping on top of each other amazing scenes yeah, it was. You know, looking back again, I, I think that, yeah, Lassen, he, he settled the nerves quite a bit that day, but I, I felt good for Harold Bratback because he answered quite a lot of critics, Morton. He had been a, a, a guy who had been on the end of a lot of criticism. Was it important for you as a team that, that Harold got a, a moment in the sun? I think so. Um, as you say, Harold's been under uh, criticism. He, I mean, he to get that goal for him was, was great. But again, Harold was a team player. He never he never complained. But he was he was being at times he was he was being unfairly treated uh, in the in the in the press. Um, but so to get that goal was was great great for Harold. Um, he was a team player, and um, it must have been great relief. And he's he's gone down as a legend now. Um, to score that winner it must have been nice for him personally. Yeah, for sure. Now, JP and I are both massive music fans and we know what the reference is uh, to, but Smell the Glove became a big thing, Mark. Um, You must have just been getting used to the Glasgow humour and (laughs) wondering yourself, what on earth was this Smell the Glove? I mean, what was your memories of that? Yeah, I I think it was Tush Tush McKinley who suddenly uh, uh, came off uh, on with the T-shirts with... uh, with the smell of the glove uh, sign on, and, and uh, to this day, I still don't know what it uh, what it means. I think uh, so. So, but but it, but it got a lot of uh, attention, uh, and and as as Morton said, until Harold uh, scored that that goal, uh, we could feel on the park uh, every time someone made a, a little bit of a mistake, uh, the fans were mumbling, and uh, you could hear the tension. Uh, uh, almost the silence. You could hear that as well. When when uh, uh, it, it was it was it was sort of it was a really really nice game to to play. But but on the other hand, it was an awful game to play as well because you you uh, you knew what it uh, meant to a lot of people. And um, and uh, and when Harold scored the goal, uh, I think we could enjoy the last. I think was it another ten or fifteen minutes to go uh, of the game. We could enjoy uh, the last bit of it. Uh, but until until Harold scored the goal, and and that just shows us how how important uh, that goal was. Uh, before that, I don't think anyone enjoyed playing the game. Um, but the last uh, ten or fifteen minutes, uh, we 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 really could enjoy, and I think the fans could enjoy it as well. Uh, because before that, it was just pure tension, and and we mm. didn't play well. So. Um, uh, until that, and, and as Morton said, I think uh, St. Johnston hit the bar, and uh, there was a lot of tension. Um, but but it was really, really nice. And, and I think it's probably the, after the game, it's probably the most that, that you'd that I have ever felt a uh, sort of a relief. Uh, and I've played some really big games uh, with the national team as well, but that was uh, just pure relief. Uh, and and you just felt so so tired uh, because the week up till till the St Johnston game, there was just a massive build up and and you you knew what it what it meant to well millions and millions of uh, of Celtic fans around the world. So so it was just big and and uh, a lot of uh, tension got off our shoulders and and a lot of relief uh, for 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 holding the trophy at the end. 
Yeah, I mean, 25 years later, JP, we're still talking about it. We're celebrating that victory and uh, the guys are going to get back together in May for a tribute evening to Vim Janssen. I'm going to leave the last question for you, JP. You can throw it out to the guys who have given us 50 minutes of their time today and we've got to really thank you for that. So over to you, JP. I mean, this is just flown in and honestly it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you both. Um, before I ask a question, I just wanted to mention a, another game that took place that season that was pretty significant that might not be considered significant, but you'll probably remember it. We won away at Rugby Park on a Wednesday night. Uh, I think we won, it was either 2-0 or 2-1. And that was such a big uh, result because I think in the season we, we we lost the league the year before, we would lost. We used to always lose at Rugby Park. For some reason, it was like an absolute uh, bogey ground for us. And I remember there was those two players, it was it Alex Burke and David Began. Like, right. those names are etched into my mind as people that like scored against Celtic and just caused us all ends of trouble but we won away on a Wednesday night and uh, I listened to the game on the radio I don't think it was televised and uh, <laughs> I sounded like I'm a bit uh, <laughs> of an alcoholic or something but I, I, I remember that night getting very very drunk <laughs> and my friends had to take me home and put me into my bed and then I then decided to get out of my bed and go next door to the local pub where I worked <laughs> and uh, remind all the locals of the fact that Celtic had won and were going to win the league and everything else. And the next day I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I went into the, the terrific inn last night. Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I was dreading going into my shift the next time I went to work because I was like, what did I say? Uh, just one of the locals, Xander, who's no longer with us, he came up to me and he grabbed me around the collar and he just went, I know you've had to put up with a lot of crap in here, but see if you ever... Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's a, a very strong memory for me. But I just, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess, um, what what would be your? Uh, you've obviously your Celtic uh, players well known to everyone of, of our vintage and anyone that's been passed down. Like, how how does it how does it feel now when you're uh, a Celtic player and you're you're going to be recognised all the time? Because it's just a fact of life. So, what what is it like to be recognised and have conversations with Celtic fans, probably all over the world? I mean, you're going to Austria skiing. I bet you any money, someone stops you on that slope for a yeah. selfie. That's because Mark's going to wear his, his Celtic jersey skiing. <laughs> so yeah, but it's it, 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 it's just uh, shows you how big a club it is, and it, it is true. No matter where you go. You get uh, recognized. I, I've I've been to to Glasgow quite a few times uh, uh, afterwards, and and I've brought my my family and my kids, and and I uh, I always tell them uh, you've got to be prepared that it's not <laughs> like it's not like walking around in in Denmark. Uh, it's they're really uh, passionate, and 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 you get known even though people who who'd never seen me play football they yeah. all. They also know you, and and, course, and uh, yeah. I think they they really got surprised when when we were up there um, uh, last time, uh, twenty years after after we'd left there, and 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 how uh, how much uh, recognition you get, and how passionate the fans are. I tell the 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 people in Denmark when when I sort of have to explain how big a club it is. Uh, both me and Morton, we've been up there twice playing a, a, a testimonial and, and, and so on. And and both times, I think the first time was against Motherwell. Uh, that was 10 years after the 10 in a row. And there was uh, 60,000 people. And, and this was just watching us <laughs> old uh, players who couldn't run anymore. And then, <laughs> then, uh, then we were up there uh, a, a few years ago as well, playing another testimonial another 60,000 people coming to watch us and now we no one could walk anymore uh, and and run anymore and and there's just just tells you how big i don't think anywhere in the world you could you could get that that sort of uh, uh, attention uh, and and uh, attendance for for a game uh, between the old old men uh, running around who can't play football anymore uh, and it just shows you how passionate uh, the the the, the the people in Glasgow and, and, and the Celtic fans in general are. Uh, and it's just a big, big privilege and a pleasure to have been part of that. 
You so, didn't. You didn't sign a three-year deal. You signed a lifetime deal, mate. That's yeah, you happened. do. You do. Yeah. yeah. What about yourself, Morton? I mean, the legacy of the teams that you played with, the successes that you had, is it something that uh, revisits you time and time again? Definitely. Uh, it stays with you for, for the rest of your life. And I have to say, I feel immensely, immensely proud of having played for Celtic, represented um, the club, um, so many fans, passionate fans, uh, like Mark says. Um, it means so much uh, to a lot of people. I have to say, it's the best time of my playing career. And I... I was I was at Celtic for six and a half years, and I often think I, quite honestly, I I um, I would have liked to have stayed for my whole playing career at at Celtic. Um, it was a great time, great memories, great teammates, fantastic players, and a, a massive massive support. Um, so it's, it's it's such a big thing, and I, I I actually think it gets bigger as you grow older, uh, and that's a nice thing. Um, so I can't wait to, to go back on, on May 12th to, to hopefully have a, a great night to remember and, and you know hopefully a lot of fans will come along. Uh, I certainly look forward to seeing uh, the boys, the, the uh, guys like John Clark and you know people uh, connected with the club. It's always such a pleasure going back. It almost feels like going home uh, when, I, when I touch down in Glasgow so I can't wait. Ah, lovely to hear. Honestly, JP and I are so appreciative, as will all the uh, viewers be, that you've given us your time this afternoon, gents. And uh, we do look forward to seeing you again in May. Enjoy the game at the weekend. Mark, enjoy the slopes in Austria as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Take care, lads. Take care. Thanks, guys. guys. JP, that was outstanding. I loved every (laughs) single minute of that. It was uh, superb. Absolute, Absolute gentleman, weren't they? Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Just, I so easy to talk to. And I mean, you, we could have easily done another hour there. I didn't even mention uh, Martin V. Strabona. I had that written down. There was a game, I remember yeah. 6 0 away to Aberdeen, and he mm-hmm. crossed by a Rabona for Reggie Winker. I was, I was there. It was, it was just that was amazing. Absolute liquid football. Ian Wright did his daft celebration when he jumped into the ground as well. And he just stuck his head in the ground. Um, no, it was brilliant. It's brilliant memories. And it is frightening that it's been 25 years since that title win, JP. It's so vivid in the in the memory. Um, but we are making new memories all the time. And Sunday, it's the big one. You say you got you managed to get a ticket? Yeah, I got one in the in the second ballot from because obviously I'm on the home cup ticket scheme and I was delighted to log log into my account and see that I was able to purchase a ticket and I did it within seconds. Uh, and, and I met uh, Nick Wood, who runs the Heriot Watt uh, Celtic Supporters Club through in Edinburgh. I met him outside the ground on Saturday and told him I'd got a ticket in the second ballot. And he went, you're so jammy, because like, apparently it was like hundreds in the second ballot as opposed to thousands. Mm-hmm. So I just, I guess, my number came up and I, and I got a ticket. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. But uh, I... I I, I couldn't even contemplate the idea of watching it on the TV somewhere because it's just not even it's not on the slope. Not even on the slopes of Austria. Well, maybe, maybe on the slopes of the Big Mark Reaper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the equivalent of the clubhouse. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. I mean, I, I, if you're going to give me an ideal scenario, one of an ideal scenario, I think that's up there, you know, because I've been itching to get away snowboarding somewhere and very envious of uh, the bold Mark Reaper away snowboarding or skiing this weekend. <laughs> See the thing with these guys, uh, you've you've been busy the last couple of weeks with your job, uh, JP. But you know we had Simon Donnelly and Paul Lambert coming in, and then Jackie McNamara last week, and then Morton and, and Mark this week. And I'm looking at them thinking, you know, they've probably got about ten years on us. Um, and I'm thinking, well, you know what, you know, if I I'm looking like these guys as fit as these guys in ten years, I'll be happy. I mean, they look Amazing, tremendous. Scandinavian ah. Scandinavians, they just don't age. It's weird. Um, but I know that. Really, really great to talk to them, and uh, I, I, I do wonder if I just uh, revealed that. I wonder if Mark Reaper knew that Henry could put him in his top eleven of players that he would played with. I don't know if he knew or not, but he probably cool. did. But even still, it was nice to. If anybody else didn't know that, it was it was pretty cool because I was what it just came up in the search bar and in YouTube, and I clicked it and I thought, was he put Mark Reaper in his top eleven? And I watched the the full five minutes, and then he was just like, yeah, centre half alongside uh, Ronald Koeman. It's just high praise indeed, isn't what it? What a lineup! What a lineup, by the way. Ah, Ronaldinho and Zlatan Ibrahimovic up front. Like that yeah. just shows you how 
unbelievable a career Larson had uh, as a player, just like the players that he played with. The night I saw him with Man United, he was, it was, I think he got subbed for either Rooney or Ronaldo. Like, mm. so <laughs> he played with greats at Man United as well. So he did. And, it, and obviously, we had to get the question on who was better, Henrik or Brian Loudrop. And Mark Reaper gave us the answer um, as well, which was, yeah. you know, expected. That's I mean, it's a small sample size for Brian Loudrop, really, isn't it? I mean, compared to Larson, can't really, I don't really think they're, they're comparable. I think what Larson did. Over his time scoring European finals and or a final rather, um, I, I mean obviously there's a hell of a lot of bias going on there <laughs> because I love the man. <laughs> but well, yeah. of course, but yeah, you've got to ask the guy that's played with the two of them. So I'm going to take his word for it, JP. Um, totally. Today was a fantastic day. Thanks everybody for joining us. Tomorrow we've got Tom Boyd live at Gracie's, followed by Martin O'Neill at Barra's Art and Design on Saturday night. Then, of course, uh, the big one, the League Cup final on Sunday. And we'll be here to cover that game as well. Thanks, everybody, for continually supporting what Axom is doing. We are trying our best to give you the best content we can possibly produce. Um, if you don't want to miss any of that, then subscribe to the channel. You, you will be thrown into a prize draw where you might be able to see Mark and Morton and others at uh, the Armadillo on the 12th of May. We're giving away tickets. Um, the other ones that we've been giving away haven't been claimed yet. So... You know, we might have to put them back up again, which is only fair, JP. Got to thank everybody for getting involved and thank you once again on the return of JP Mason for your time on a Celtic State of Night.